Kia ora, and welcome to the Completely Correct channel. I'm Francesca. And I'm Destin Spinker. On today's show, we have a football player who was hit in the head by a football kicked by a fellow player. Reports say that he was acting strange and unnatural. 50 Joshes fight to see who the best Josh is. Surely this will be the most interesting interview of the day. But first up, Nina Gregg and her issue with the Eiffel Tower. Famous actress and Instagram sensation Nina Grigg had something to say when filming Happy Little Clouds in Paris, France. The Eiffel Tower is nothing compared to nature itself, says Nina. Miss Grigg would like to have it moved as it's blocking a huge part of the scene and the inspiration for the film, the sky. Her petition, Move the Monstrosity, has flooded Instagram and seen many previous fans outraged. Here's our on-spot reporter Kayla Angus with Nina Grigg at the scene now. Hi, I'm Kayla, and we're here with Nina Gregg from the movie Happy Little Clouds. Ms. Gregg, thank you for joining us on this lovely day. Hurry up, will you? I, like, have a nail and hair appointment in, like, 45 minutes. I'll be late if you don't, like, get to the point. <laughs> yeah, so make it snuff. Uh, okay. I heard that you're playing Frida Kahlo in the movie Happy Little Clouds. Apparently, during filming, you decided that the Alpha Eiffel Tower was in the way. What was it in the way of? Is it like obvious? Oh my gosh, you're like so annoying. I mean, the movie is literally called Happy Little Clouds. What do you think it's in the way of? It's blocking most of the scenes in the movie. Also, it's like so ugly. It's like a disgrace to all of France. Most of the scenes in my movie are around the Eiffel Tower. I mean, why? Like, most of the movies in France are around the Eiffel Tower. Can these people, like, be more original? And on top of all of that, it's blocking my view of the museum, which, look a, which would look a lot better if it was moved, like, a little bit to the right. Uh, you mentioned that the Eiffel Tower is ugly and a disgrace to France. Tell us more. I believe that Mother Nature has the power to heal. It's like the most beautiful thing in the world, apart from me. And me? No. Yeah. No. Ugh. It is like completely natural. Everyone is always like, save the planet, stop global warming. We can make a start by focusing on natural beauty instead of man-made ugly metal structures. I mean, like, why does it even have to be there? It doesn't, like, resemble anything important. And to answer your other question, as I said before, there is beauty in the form of Mother Nature. And France is full of nature. Speaking of beauty, my clothing designs have just been released. Buy now at ninagregisamazing.com. Google it. Your petition, Move the Monstrosity, is gaining momentum around the world. How do you think the people of France feel about it? The only thing it resembles is a piece of rusty triangular scrap metal with weird pans on it that you can't even see. They should have, like, let that con man sell it back in the 80s or something. I mean, like, I've only been here a few months, and I'm just, like, so sick of looking at this ugly thing. Sculpture. Yeah. Oh. oh, sculpture, I mean. <laughs> I'm like highly influential, and so far the French government has refused to pay any attention to my petition. <laughs> so I'm kind of hoping this platform will like get the party started. Oh, Nina. Yell him his hair. We need to go. Oh, well, I got my appointment now, so. Nina out. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. No comment. Uh, I guess that's all from me. Back to you in the CCC studio. An interesting interview. Thanks, Kayla. And now for something completely different. On April 24th, 2021, the legendary Josh fight commenced. The fight started with the one and only Josh Swain from Tuscan, Arizona. Josh Swain sent out texts to other Josh Swains around the world. Internet websites and sources, especially Reddit, went crazy about the fight after a Facebook Messenger screenshot capturing many of the users' names, not jo Josh Swain, was posted online. When the designated date came, Joshes all over America flocked to Lincoln, Nebraska for the Josh fight. 
Now over to our reporter, Katie Rutledge. Thanks, Francesca and Destin. I'm standing here with Josh Swain, who organised this event. So, Josh, tell me why you hosted this showdown. So, I was on Reddit, you know, scrolling through my daily memes, and honestly, to be honest, an apocalypse has descended upon Reddit. All the memes are getting stale. The meme templates, ugh, yeah, 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 terrible. TikTok, out of all signs, TikTok is taking over, and Wednesday Frog on Tuesday, unacceptable. So, I decided, as a long-time Reddit admin since 2011, I tip my head to you, Reddit, I will stir something in the Matrix. So, Josh, how did you carry this out? Uh, so, you know, like, I was scrolling through Reddit, uh, Twitter. Uh, yes, I was on Twitter. It's bad for my mental health, but I don't care. So, I was scrolling through Reddit, and I found out that there wasn't enough room for the 50 of us Josh Swains on this site. So, I decided to challenge them April 24th, 2021, at the coordinates negative 40.8569420 degrees north and negative 85.12345 degrees west. What's happening? Um, thanks for taking me through this historic event. Back to the studio. Thanks, Katie. Now for something completely different. Professional goalkeeper for the Premier League, Jordan Pickford, was hit in the head during the Euro final. Luckily, he gained nothing but a concussion. However, later in the game, he rushed to the halfway line with the ball, then suddenly collapsed on the field. We sent our most professional reporter to interview Jordan earlier today. He has answered the rumoured question, did he have a heart attack on the field? Here's a recording of the interview from earlier today. Following this interview, Coke's shares skyrocketed. Here's why. Thanks. I'm Kristen, and this is Mr. F Pickford. So, Mr. Pickford, what happened after you collapsed? You were rushed to the hospital, and rumor has it that you had a heart attack. Uh, well, in here, reality, I was actually just feeling a little tired, you know? <laughs> Every needs a, everyone needs a good rest every once in a while, and well, mm -hmm, uh, that field was as good a place as any. <laughs> in reality, I was actually just really tired, as I said. Completely fine. <laughs> but some doctors are just so pushy, you know? A player just wants to have a little sleep on the field and they barge in and bring you away to hospital. <laughs> so, Mr. Pickford, what were you thinking when you were rushed to the hospital? Well, I was unconscious at the time, but I distinctly remember having a dream about Donald Trump and Kim Kardashian buying some capes. <laughs> Preposterous. Anyway, I woke up in the stretcher bed in a stretcher bed in the middle of hospital and saw seven doctors looking extremely sus. So I looked over at them and I was so shocked. I thought I'd been abducted in my sleep. I fell right off my stretcher bed. And then the doctors came over and said, Sir, you just had a heart attack. And I said, No. I just fell off my stretcher bed. It's not that bad, mate. So, was it true, Mr. Pickford, you go rush to halfway after Ronaldo's strike hit you in the head? Or did you just find the game a bit boring and wanted to spice things up a little? Well, Ronaldo's strike did hurt quite a lot, and I was planning to do something about it. But then I got hit on the head, started feeling really tired. <laughs> I think it was actually because I was dehydrated. Oh, I nearly forgot, Mr. Pickford, your water. Water? Water is insufficient, mate. Drink Coca-Cola. Oh, oh so, somebody oh, call an ambulance. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Kristen. Now it's time to go over to Laura and Ben with the weather update. The word is, it'll leave you electrified. 
Good evening, folks. I'm Laura, and this is Ben. Today, we will be discussing the weather, starting down in Oban and then travelling up the country, ending in Cape Reinga. Yes, today there have been bushfires and strong winds predicted for New Zealand. In fact, Laura, we'll be expecting some very strange weather occurrences indeed. Are you sure that's right? You can't have fires on the weather forecast for New Zealand. Sure. OK, so down in Oban, we'll be expecting a slight chance of hail and mild humidity, perhaps even causing some flood or maybe even a tidal wave or two in Stewart Island. Hey to the surface, get your boards ready. Don't you think that's a bit extreme? I don't think there'll be any tidal waves. Anyway, then moving up to Dunedin with temperatures at 9 degrees at the lowest and 14 at the highest. We can expect a 78.57% chance of light showers and we'll pretty much cold weather for most people in the surrounding areas. Remember your swimsuits, everybody. Swimsuits? Why would anyone want to go swimming in the middle of winter? Next, we move up to Queenstown, which has a high chance of strong winds, with a wind speed of 30 kilometres an hour and a 30% chance of raining tacos. Tacos? Yeah, tacos. It's raining tacos out of the sky. It's raining. Ahem. <coughs> Wait, oh, we just got an update from our meteorologists about the taco situation. It turns out there's a 0% chance it will rain tacos. Sorry for the fake news. There'll be a 30% chance of light rain and a small chance of a mild hurricane wrecking the city. Stay in your houses, everybody, or you might get blown away. Across the mighty Cook Strait and up to Wellington, a lovely still day, as usual, with 100 kilometre winds and... And a low of 3 degrees and a high of 12 degrees. And sunny the next day with a 75% chance of rain and barely any clouds in the sky. Are you sure that's right? You can't have rain without clouds. Oh, sorry. I meant loads of clouds. Jeez, this auto coupon is tiny. Working our way up again and completely ignoring the bits in between, we've arrived in Auckland with a low of 6 degrees and a high of 17 a mild breeze and moderate sun. Auckland will have a great day tomorrow. Fantastic. Can't wait. Oh, hang on. I don't really care. I'm not even going to be in Auckland. Yes, you sussy bucker. Finally, up to Whangarei, they have strong winds ranging from 24 to 45 kilometres an hour with a low of 12 degrees and a high of 26. Well, better watch out if you're going for a walk. Hey, we're going for a walk after this. Now, we end up in Cape Reinga up top with a 20 degree low and a 40 degree high. Cape Reinga's going to have a hot day tomorrow. Wow, what a hot summer. Everybody better remember their sunglasses. But it's the middle of winter. Anyway, there'll be a 67.98% chance of snow or sludge, as I like to call it, up in Cape Reinga. A little sunburn followed by frostbite for all of the residents. What unpredictable weather. What? That's crazy. Let me see that. Why are there drawings all over this? Wait, okay, here's the actual weather for Cape Reinga. I had Ben's script. There'll be a high of 23 degrees and a low of 12 degrees Celsius. There will also be a 20% chance of rain and a couple of clouds over the next few days. No snow or extreme heat. Now for the overview. The North Island has an average temperature of 13 degrees and the South Island has the same. There'll be a range of winds, rain and clouds all around the country, but sadly, not a lot of heat in the next two days. Wait, we've just received an urgent update from our live meteorologists. We... I'll take over. There's a very large electrical storm travelling towards New Zealand at a rate of 50 kilometres per hour. Well, that's all for the weather report. Thanks, but bye. Well, that wraps it up for today. We surely had some interesting news today, didn't we, Francesca? We sure did, Destin. Anyways, that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you again next time from the whole team at the Completely Correct channel. Goodbye. Bye.